Okay, I thought I'd do a little instructional video on these uh, <clears throat> induction heaters here. This is one I got. Of course, I slightly modified mine uh, because I was doing some experimenting, trying to figure these things out. Uh, this is the 20 volt, 1000 watt ZVS, ZVS low voltage induction heating board module flyback. They say this will uh, work from about 12 volts on up to 40 or 50 volts, something like that. So this one doesn't really tell you that on this particular one, on this particular site, but that's what they say in the specifications that I've read elsewhere. Uh, I finally figured out how to make it work. Uh, there's a couple things they don't tell you. Uh, here's another board too, and these are this is a lower power one that I, I bought for like ten dollars on eBay. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, right now I want to get this this bigger one working. There's a little trick to these things, which again they don't tell you. And I know there's been some that have got these working, and unlike and like myself, uh, I have not. I had bad results with them thinking there was something wrong with them or that it was just a bunch of hogwash. Well, there is a trick to this, so I want to dis discuss that right now. So, first of all, we'll turn on the power supply and let's set it up to 30 volts. Okay, you see that's 30 volts and I got it on the uh, 3 amp. So, I'm going to connect this right here, right now, and boom, it's working. It is working. All right, you see that? It's it's about two amps on the scale there. And it's still sitting at 30 volts. And of course, this coil is gonna get pretty dang warm. It does get warm. And these heat sinks stay cool. All right, that's good. Uh, there is a caveat, now watch this. I'm at 30 volts at, at two amps, that's fine. We turn it off, I'm gonna turn it on. Uh-oh, check's dead short, doesn't it? That's a problem. So that looks like you got a problem here. But wait a minute, if we pull this out and put it back in, it starts to work. Well, uh, it turns out these, these uh, units uh, need a good, uh, need a, like a, a, a kick. And that's when you turn it on, you've got to have the voltage ready there so it'll get it oscillating. Uh, and this little guy here, same thing. Same thing. This will. This one is a 12 volt unit. It's supposed to run from 12, 5 to 12 volts, and uh, it behaves the same way. And I've learned these kind of oscillators work like this. They need a. You really need to kickstart them pretty hard with a voltage already there, waiting, and the current, and then, boom, they'll work. Now I'm going to try the same thing as I did. Watch when I turn the power supply down and then I'll turn it back up, it'll act like a dead short. All right. Yep, see there? Now it acts like a dead short. That's what I did when I first got this unit. I put it on the power supply and crep up the voltage. You can't do that. It doesn't work. So if we remove this and then do it again, ta-da, it works. That's the way these things need to be started. So, uh, and course those coils get hot because of the high resonant uh, tank circuit that they do work uh, and I'll demonstrate this let's go ahead and crank it up the power supply up there at 30 volts now it's probably going to peg but I think I can get some results off this it's starting to smoke let's see if we can get it to turn red now show that these things actually do work. You don't see the smoke, but it's there. Maybe it'll turn red, maybe it won't. Just don't have enough power or uh, current in this power supply to, to run this thing at its full potential. But I wanted to demonstrate how to um, operate these units. Okay, this one is not going to get red hot show you on the sponge that it is definitely hot. See that? There you go. You can see it does work. I just can't get this one to go red hot uh, at, with this uh, existing power supply. Heat sinks are plenty cool. Of course, this coil gets very hot, quite hot. Uh, and they recommend you run uh, 
water or something through here, but uh, I don't have that option right now, so I just shut it off. But this is the way you get them started to work, and as you see, if you do it this way, then it, it'll work. They will work. Let me demonstrate this one now. Same way. Uh, get that out of the way. Bring this one down. Connect these up. Uh, positive. I just put this resistor there as an inconvenient place. It doesn't have anything to do with the circuit. It's a convenient place to put the uh, clip leads. Now I'll turn this down to appropriate voltage. And you'll see the same behavior. Okay, it'll work. But if you turn it off, turn it back on, it'll be like a dead short. See there? It's a dead short. But if you take that off and put it back on, Shazam, it works. It's got a, it's the best way to uh, kickstart these. So let's see if we can heat something else up here. I've heated this up before. I think I can get it red hot. Let's see this screwdriver and we'll try to keep it all in the frame. Okay. I think I can get this red hot. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Try it. Yeah, there it goes. It's getting red hot. Oh yeah. See the current's changing too. That thing, I don't know if you can see that in there. That is red. Definitely red hot. So there. It's red again. See it. So that focus. Oh, see. Alright, so now I'll disconnect it. I'll connect it and starts oscillating. But if you turn it off, again is to review. <laughs> and you connect it, think you're going to turn it on, up, oh, it's dead short, so simply remove this and then put it back. you got to have a good kick of current to get the thing going, get it to oscillating. And some may be able to do it uh, different ways. I mean, they, some might say, oh yeah, well they don't have that problem with theirs, but in case you get one of these and they don't work right away, this is how you have to start them. It's highly recommended you get a, at least a ten, 5 or a 10 amp power supply and then they'll work.